I'm Craig Horbinski. I'm a professor of pathology and neurosurgery at Northwestern Medicine. As director of the Northwestern Nervous System Tumor Bank, one of the projects that I developed was a collection of post-mortem gliomas as a way of better understanding mechanisms of disease resistance to therapy. Post-mortem collections of glioma patients are very rare, especially in the last 30 to 40 years, because the assumption is we know why these patients are dying. They're dying of, of course, the brain tumor. But exactly how that happens is still been based until now on studies that were conducted back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And that was before the current era of temozolomide and radiation and advanced neurosurgical resection of these brain tumors. Well, all the pictures of, of postmortem glioblastomas are all from decades ago, and they show these gargantuan tumors that are squishing the rest of the brain and causing herniation and all these horrible things. It looks terrible. When we started doing this postmortem collection to study mechanisms of disease resistance, that's what we were expecting to find. Instead, we found case after case after case where if you actually look at the original tumor site in the main part of the brain, it doesn't really look all that bad. Uh, there's a very heavy extension of the tumor from the original site all the way down into the brain stem, including the midbrain and the pons and sometimes the medulla. Most of the research efforts, especially towards trying to treat recurrent tumors, focuses on that original tumor site. Our data indicate that the patients may not be dying from the original tumor site because the disease burden isn't that great there. Even though radiology sometimes indicates severe disease, some, that's not usually the case. New therapies potentially should be tested a lot sooner. Don't wait until the tumor shows radiologic recurrence at the original site because you've just given the tumor that much more time to get down into the brainstem. And then that could help explain why a lot of the therapies that looked so promising have failed in clinical trials because the, we waited too long to give them that therapeutic. One of the things that we hope to achieve by this is raising awareness of the pattern of disease spread is different than it used to be and that better surgery and better you know, radiation and temozolomide have changed how this disease recurs and progresses. What we're hoping for is that new clinical trials and new therapeutics are going to be designed with that in mind. Increase, for example, radiation coverage to the brainstem. Even coming up with new therapeutics that arrest or even reverse the migration of tumor cells from the original site down into the brainstem. One of the next steps in this project is advanced full genomic sequencing of both the original tumor at the time of diagnosis the tumor that remained near the original site at the post-mortem setting, and then the tumor that migrated down into the brainstem. And our, our hypothesis is that there will be specific subclones of tumor, specific genetic subclones of tumor, that preferentially like to migrate down into the pons relative to the tumor that prefers to stay put. And our hope is then that that will generate new ideas on how to stop this process from happening. 